Hey, welcome back. It's day 25. I hope you feel that your body uh, feels restored after you get some rest, that your muscles in your arms are ready to do some more arm balances. Today, some twisted variations. Let's get to it. Hit that like button, leave a comment after the video, let me know how it goes, and subscribe to the channel. Have you been watching this 30 day challenge you haven't subscribed yet? What's up with that? Help to support us. Thank you. All right, so let's get started in child's pose. <clears throat> let's take toes curled under, start to sit the hips back towards your heels and stretch the arms. Oh, wait a minute. I want to remind you, if you're attempting this video without having done the warm up from day 22, shame. You have to, you have to pause the video right now, go back and do day 22's warm up video, then come back to this. We're not going to warm up in this video, so you got to be properly warmed up. Okay. All right, from child's pose, stretch into dog. Then bring your right foot up to your left, uh, to your right thumb and lower your left knee down onto the floor. <clears throat> Place your hands onto blocks and start to upright yourself. As you reach down through your left shin, draw your navel in, raise your left arm up to the ceiling. Then hook your left elbow to your knee, bring your palms together. Let your right hip crease drop, pin your right hip in, open up your chest. Drop the right heel bone. Keeping your right heel bone dropping, your right hip crease dropping, and your right hip pinned in so that your right hip is aligned with your center knee and center ankle, curl your back toes and start to lift your back knee up. But keep dropping the right hip, right heel, pin the right hip, and lengthen yourself straight out through the midline. Right in between your inner ankles, get long. Let the navel release away from the right thigh and turn upwards to your right shoulder. Bring your knee down, bring your hands down. Step back to down dog. Oh, by the way, this is a great down dog. If you have really tight shoulders and you're really stiff in your back body, Try putting your hands on blocks like this. I have my hand like it's giving a handshake around the block. Also, if it's difficult for you to step up when we're doing stepping, check out this, how easy it is to step your foot up in between your blocks. I forgot about telling you guys about that. That would have helped earlier in the challenge. Okay. My bad. Come on, it's, uh, upright yourself in the lunge. Stretch down through your right shin. Raise your right arm. Then bring your elbow to your knee. Bring your palms together. Let the left hip crease drop, left heel drop. Curl your right toes under. And keep the hip crease heel dropping as you lift your back knee. Lengthen straight out in between your inner ankles. Breathe through your nose. Then lower your knee, bring your hands down, step back to down dog.
Walk your feet up in between your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Bring your hands onto your hips. Come all the way up to stand. Mountain pose. Stand tall, balanced up over your ankles. Step your left foot back, about three and a half feet. Inhale, roll your shoulders back, open up your chest. Exhale, tip forward. Put your left hand down onto the block in front of your big toe. Okay, so this is to cultivate awareness of the inner ankle line. When we're twisting in triangle, there's a tendency to lean, to fall over towards the side of the mat that you're twisting on. So instead, I want you to lengthen your spine through the line of the right inner knee and inner ankle. Lengthen yourself, lengthen yourself. Put your right hand on your hip and just work on getting as long as you can. Then start to spin from your belly up to your right shoulder. But keep lengthening yourself. Most bodies that I've noticed teaching lack the ability to lengthen the spine in a position like this. So see if you can get the spine to release into its length, get longer and stronger as you're twisting. Good, and then bring your hand down, press your feet, inhale, come back up. Step your left foot forward, right foot back. Line up your inner heels, stand tall, inhale, open your chest, and exhale, start to fold. Place your hand down, little bend, elongate the spine straight out in between your feet, find that inner ankle line. Now start to spin, turn your belly up to your left shoulder and start to roll the chest, but keep lengthening as you're turning. Bring your hand down. Step your, press into your feet, come back up to stand, and step your foot forward. Mountain pose. Good, stand tall. Okay, now let's practice a balanced twist. So, put your blocks right at the top of your mat, come up on your fingertips, then, we're gonna take the feet about a foot and a half behind the blocks so that you're starting to make a flat back position here like Ardha Uttanasana basically, but with the hands more forward. Now elongate the spine and without your hips twisting, bring your left heel to your buttock, stretch your legs straight back. It's like a modified warrior three. So you should have the strength in your core and your right butt. As you firm your right butt, it prevents you from sinking off to the right. Now take your block in line with the big toe, the, left, the block under the left hand and turn it down a notch. Turn your shoulder down into the block, put your right hand on your hip. Now elongate yourself, just like in the last twist. Stretch your back leg. Lengthen the spine, start to spin the navel, the ribs, the chest, and then take your arm up. Good, and then lower your hand and fold forward. Blocks up on the tall height, let your head drop. Then come back up onto the fingertips, Arda. Little bend in your knees, bring the right heel to the buttock. Don't let the hips twist. Don't let your middle twist, pull your navel in as you stretch your leg back. Modified warrior three. You should feel the muscles in your left outer butt turn on to support you. As always, you can check 
in a mirror just to make sure that what you think is happening is actually happening. But then ultimately we want to practice just feeling the awareness after we've checked it a couple of times since you don't have a teacher to check you out. Then turn the block down under the right hand, put the hand flat, left hand to your hip, elongate your spine, start to turn, spin from your navel up to your shoulder, but keep lengthening your spine, stretch straight back through that back leg, breathe your length. Keep the left hip hugged in over the ankle. And fold forward, Uttanasana. Place your hands onto your hips and come all the way up to stand. Inhale, raise your arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back to plank pose. Stretch back to dog pose. From plank pose, shift forward. Bring your left knee to your right armpit. Pull your belly in, but keep your collarbones broad. Change sides. Bring your right knee to your left armpit. Keep your upper chest broad, collarbones open, but now turn your belly, navel in, knee towards the pit. Good, stretch that leg back, set the knees down, and stretch back to child's pose. Inhale, come back up on your hands and your knees. Stretch back to down dog. Walk your feet forward to the front of the mat. Lift your heels up and squat down onto your heels. Okay, let's try our next arm balance, side crow. So for side crow, we're gonna use that same action we just practiced in the plank. We're gonna twist to the right first. So take your right hand to your left side lower belly and spin it to the right. Just like we've been practicing our twist. Spin the belly and spin it up to the shoulder. Then hook your left armpit or tricep all the way on that outer knee. Put the hands down. Let the sit bones drop. Draw the navel, spin the navel and let it release into your spine instead of hardening to your thigh. Then we're just gonna lean into the arms keeping the collarbones broad, the feet kick off to the left a little, and then you just tip into your chaturanga. Notice my right hip isn't on my right elbow. Then I set the feet back down. Do you wanna see it from the back? You get to see it from the front. Okay, so let me show from the other side. I'll show on the back so you can see. Okay, so first, come into this little squat here. Then I spin the belly. I'm gonna hook this arm so that the knee, outer knee, hooks right up in my tricep. Okay, then the hands go down, shoulder distance. I spread the knuckles, collarbones broad, like in plank. Navel in, lower back broad. Then, the feet scoot off to the right a little, and I just lean into my arms. So mostly, the legs are just stacked over the right elbow, and most of the weight is onto the right arm. Then I set the feet back down, and how'd it go? Okay, I hope good. Let's stretch back to down dog now.
Okay, from down dog, let's do our preparation for headstand. Interlock the hands. Rest the sides of the thumbs together. Imagine in between your hands, you're holding an egg. You don't want to crush it by squeezing the hands, but you don't want to let it fall out either. The elbows come in so that the center elbow is aligned with the center shoulder. I press the forearms down and I move the inner shoulder blades out of the ears. Curl your toes, lift your knees. Keep reaching down into your forearms, move the inner blades out of the ears and ascend the spine. Instead of letting the, the hips sink into your shoulders, lift the hips off the shoulders. Now see if you can walk the feet in closer without the back rounding. Move the upper spine in, like you have a knee in your upper back, and lift through the hips. Then without the ribs or hips twisting, raise the left leg up. So you get strong obliques by preventing the hips from twisting. Those are your side abs. Let the side abs control here. Slowly lower the leg and raise the right leg from the inner thigh without twisting open. Strong side abs to prevent you from twisting. Often I see people like swing in their hips. They're not gonna get the control in their core if they never learn to keep the hips level. Lower the leg back down, set your knees down, stretch into child's pose. Come back up onto your hands and your knees. Then swing the legs around. Cross your right ankle on the outside of your left knee and left heel on the outside of your right hip. Put a block underneath your sit bones, your buttocks. Sit up tall and twist to your right. Whole lot of twisting today. Come back to center. Change the cross of your legs. And twist. Come back to center, uncross your legs, and take the soles of the feet together, knees wide apart, Baddha Konasana. Press the center of the heels, release from the groins to the knees, pull from the outer knees into the hips. So first, the challenge is to see if you can sit up right and let the knees fall down to hip height. If you got that, oh, it's pretty good, it's easy. Then you can start to tip forward. But notice how the knees wanna lift back up, let the knees stretch again. See if you can tip a little further, still keeping the knees releasing. And then come back up, knees together. All right, take your block for your upper back. We're gonna lie down, just do a little chest opener for any closing that might have occurred as a result of the arm balances. Put your hands behind your head, a rest style, and turn the elbows in as you back bend over the block. Let the back of the skull drop down. Sit the sit bones down, reach them down, buttocks down. Stretch one arm back. 
Keep the neck free on that side. Change arm, stretch the other arm back without the neck crunching on that side. Externally rotate the arm. Keep the neck free. Bend that elbow. All right, now like a crunch, bring the chin in. Roll yourself up. Stretch the legs out, sit up, and lie down onto your back. Hug your right knee in. <clears throat> Take your block on the medium height to the side. Open the right arm out to the side and twist. Take your shin all the way over onto the block. Actively release both hips evenly out of the lower back so that the lower back is lengthened evenly. Let the neck lengthen evenly and let the navel release to the spine and turn to the right shoulder, just like we've been practicing. Back to center and change sides. Take the block, take the block all the way over to the other side, take your knee into your hand and guide the shin all the way over onto the block. Actively release both hips out of the lower back. Elongate the neck and let your navel plug into the spine and turn to the left shoulder as the shoulder opens. Bring your leg back to center. <clears throat> Stretch your legs out. Shavasana, course pose. Just let the body relax. Then on your next exhalation, like you're fogging a mirror, but with your mouth closed, make a sound. See if you make the same noise on the inhalation. So keep making the sound, but make it nice and smooth. Not like you're trying to force the air out. See if you can keep slowing it down, but not so slow to where it becomes sputtery. Nice and smooth. Each breath is helping to calm the nerves and soothe the mind instead of creating more tension. Forehead calm, eyes soft, ears so soft, sides of the jaw soft, 
tongue passive. And go back to normal breathing. Just relax, feel the flow of energy in the body as a result of the pranayama, the breathing meditation. And gently bend your knees and roll over to your right side. Press yourself up. Namaste.